In release 18 of Cinema 4D, we can select the cloner. And here we have it set as endpoint. We can go per step. And if I drag this, you will see that the clone number changes and the distance remains the same. The problem with this is that the number of our clones changes. So, for example, now we have 11 times 9 times 1, whereas before we had 10 times 10. And this uh, can be problematic sometimes. What if we just want to add some uh, random integers from 1 to whatever number this times this is, the number of grid positions we have on our grid? Well, we can use Expresso again to our rescue. And how do we do that? Well, I'm going to go to the second one and add an Expresso tag. And I'm going to drag this in here, select it, so that I can get the text and put it on the input. I can always go here and try and find where my input is. Object properties and uh, text. There you go. Here it is. But I prefer this method because it's more intuitive. So command double click to just make it slightly bigger and fit the text. And what I'm going to do is I need to get these three numbers and do a multiplication. And actually, with these three numbers, I'm going to drive the text, which means the largest number in my sequence. So let's do that. Drag the cloner in here and let's drag the count over here. Now if I command double click, if I go here, you will see somewhere around here the object properties. We have the count. Now we dragged all three of them but we want each one separately so we can do some sort of calculation. So in this case this drag and drop method doesn't really help us. In order to delete this, I double click and it vanishes. Click here, object properties, and let's go here, count x, and do this again, object properties count y, because these are the two ones we want. But for good measure, just in case we want to change the configuration of our grid array, let's go and add all three. Count z, command double click or control double click on a PC, and here are the three numbers. The next thing I'm going to do is right click, new node, let's go to Expresso, calculate, because we can do a calculation, and let's find our fantastic math. And with the math selected, change the function to multiplication. Fantastic. And which are the two numbers we want to multiply? We want to multiply this one with this one. And I'm going to command drag this to make a copy of it, because now I want to multiply the result of these with the last one. So now essentially we've done this times this times this, drag this as the input, and look at this. Now if I drag this, we have these integers, and they are randomized. So with this very brief setup, you can have any type of numerical array that respects the integer numbers and randomizes them. If you want them sequential, all you have to do is go to random and turn it off, and now they are sequential. Lastly, and because we did this three-way multiplication, even if I add, I'm going to make this 5 times 5 times 5, in this case, everything works perfectly. And we have all integers from 1 to 125. I would like to close off this video with a side note. Some of you that are more proficient with MoGraph and Expresso may be wondering why I'm not using the Data node. So if I right-click, New Node, Motion Graphics, Data, this Data node allows us to feed it with the object output, which is nothing more than telling it that this object, which is represented by this node, is fed into the data node. So now the data node can provide us information about the object, which is basically the cloner. And you will see that the cloner has uh, the counts, which count changes depending on the mode we have for the cloner. So for example, the count here is three numbers, one for each of the axes. But if I switch this to linear, then the count is a single number. And when I switch to a different mode, then the previous outputs don't have any existence. That's why they're called undefined. 
Now, if I get rid of these by double-clicking, I'm disconnecting, then double-clicking again to delete these outputs. If I take the count and feed it here, you will see that when I go to the cloner and I increase or decrease, this is going to work. And not only that, if I go to a grid array configuration, I can again do this. So you'll be asking me, why did you do the multiplication, which is much more complex and needs a different setup for a different mode, instead of using the data node that works with all the modes? And the answer is very simple. Because of certain priority issues between MoGraph, Expresso, and the text, which I won't go into detail, when we do things like, for example, drag this, you will see these flashes. And this will have a practical problem. And let me show you one of these practical problems. I'm going to go to a very simple linear configuration. At frame 0, I'm going to set my count to 8. And at frame 10, I'm going to set my count to 18. Press Enter and keyframe this. What you will see is that when the animation is playing, Instead of getting our nice round numbers, we'll first see these numbers with decimals. And when I release, we'll see these numbers here. And that will cause a problem when we are actually creating animations using this method. So although the other method seems a bit more complex, it does work even under these conditions. And the only problem is that for each and every one of these cloner modes, you need to create a different Expresso setup so it can read the correct count. So with that in mind, you can proceed and create magnificent creations.